Welcome to RC4 Wireless. And in this video, we're gonna discuss magic orbs and setting wireless animations to them. For our example today, we're gonna to use the orbs that were designed for the Utah Festival Opera's production of the Magic Flute. In this production, we had three adults and three kids that had to be able to handle these orbs on stage. We wanted to send video animations to it, creating lightning, swirling effects, kind of like planetary feeling inside there, blues, green, swirling around. We wanted to have a lot of control of what was inside the orbs. Now, things that we had to take into account when designing these. One, it had to be appropriate weight for both adults and kids to carry. Two, we needed to have grip on here so they could hang on to it. Three, it had to be structurally sound, so when it did and it does get dropped on stage, it'd be fine. And two, we had to be able to fit the electronics and battery on the inside to keep it wireless. First, let's talk about the shell of the orb. The shell's printed out a translucent PETG. PETG is nice and strong, it's easy to print, and it has the ability to withstand the heat emitted by the LEDs. When we designed the orb to make it easier to hang on to, we wanted to put this texture on here in order to give it a little bit of traction and grip. When we turn the orb over, you can see the cavity where the electronics and LEDs will go. Now we could have printed this with a thinner wall. As you can see this wall is pretty thick here. We found that having thicker walls with the gyroid infill diffused the light a lot better. Printing time was much better than if we would have done, let's say, thinner walls with just a solid infill and have to have supports in there to be able to finish out the dome. Now this print did not finish, it only it failed partway through, that's why we can see this. But all of this wasted material in the center here to support the top of the dome and then having a thinner sides, one, did not diffuse the light well enough, two, took much longer to print than if we did something like this. If we had the orbs on stage for a longer period of time, we would want to have a filament that could withstand higher temperatures because these LEDs will generate a fair amount of heat and it could disrupt the shape of this PLA. There are two parts to our core. We have the outer core, which has our LEDs, and then we have the inner core, which will have our battery and our DMX picks. Before we put our electronics into the orb, we're going to want to set up the settings in our DMX picks. So we're going to take our picks, we're going to connect it to our battery here. When you're changing settings for your RC4 gear using DMX cat, make sure you unplug your transmitters. Your RC4 gear will default to the transmitter, the DMX IO, before it will default to listening to your DMX cat. Let's go ahead and pause the video for one second here. While we were editing the video, we realized that if you're new to RC4 products, you may not know the difference between a DMX IO and a DMX cat. So let's cover that real quick. Your DMX IO is your transmitter that will connect your console to your wireless dimmers. This will transmit all your data. The DMX CAT allows you to connect directly to your device and through RDM, you can change the settings in your firmware using the DMX CAT. In order to connect the DMX CAT to your dimmer, you have to use an adapter like this five pin XLR to eighth inch adapter. After you're done with your DMX CAT, go ahead and unplug it and then plug back in your transmitters. I'm gonna open up the DMX CAT app I'm gonna to go to RDM controller. Now that I see my DMX picks pop up, I'm gonna click on RDM. And then we're gonna to go to subdevices and we're gonna be using output A, which is subdevice one. I'm gonna click on RDM. Now I want my starting address to be one, but if I wanted to be anything else, I could change my starting address there. We're gonna click on dimmer. I'm gonna make sure that I am set to a WS2811 slash 12. That's the pixel protocol that we're using in the orb. I am currently at that. Our pixel color order is RGB. We're gonna test that in just a moment here to make sure that's correct. And we're gonna to want to be incremental for our sequencing. We're gonna go and bring up address one, which should be red, because that's our color order, RGB, but it's green. Our address two is red. Address three is blue. So it looks like we are G, R, B. So we're gonna go back into RDM, we're gonna click RDM again, we're gonna click subdevices for the subdevice one, which is your output A, we're gonna click RDM. We're gonna to go to dimmer, and for pixel color order, we're gonna select GRB. Let's go back and test it one more time. There's red, green, blue. Great, now our color order is correct. It'll make it a lot easier to mix on the console. Let's go ahead and put together our orb. Now that we've set up our DMX picks, let's go ahead and assemble all of our electronics together. To attach your pixel tape to your outer core, you could just use hot glue and hot glue it along the way, along with using the LED tape's adhesive. Next time I design a new orb, I'm gonna actually put in little hooks that the LED tape can actually slide into. We're going to insert our battery into its slot. We're going to drop our DMX picks in. 
take our core, our core, we're going to take our outer core and we're going to slide it on top, just like that. We're going to connect our wires together. And we've left space inside of here so we can tuck wires down in. Uh, but you're more than welcome to obviously shorten wires up from what we did. This is actually the prototype that we used to make sure the orbs worked. Now we're going to plug it in. Do the same thing. We'll tuck our wires up on top here because we left room on top for the wires to live. We're going to grab our core here. And we're going to slip things in. Now this is the prototype here. The final version actually had threaded inserts in order to thread on the base and the cap. So the cap would live on here like this. And then with the cap here, we actually had a little bit of space printed in here. So it allowed air to flow out, but you couldn't see the gap in there from the audience. Let's go ahead and try our first cue. And there we go. We have a magical orb that's doing a color swirl effect. We have our lightning effect. We have a blue green swirl. We have our pink swirl. Our purple and pink with a little bit of gold in there. This is programmed in EOS with each pixel being patched as an RGB fixture and just using basic linear effects and color effects. Now we could use a pixel media server, but in our situation, this was the easiest way to do it. For our production of the Magic Flute, our programmer John Mitchell had a brilliant idea of patching these as multi-cell fixtures, which made it a lot easier to maintain and manage in the big scope of the show. And there we go, we have a magical orb that can do lightning, swirls, storms, anything you can think of inside the orb. It's 150 addresses for 50 pixels. Now, what if you don't have that many addresses to spare for, let's say, three orbs at 150 addresses apiece? Well, there's a way around that. The DMX Pix is an extremely powerful device. We can set what's called keyframes inside there to solve this problem. Let's take a look at this. When we control our LEDs, we're a one-to-one -one patch. So each LED is independently controlled here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take our DMX cap, we're gonna plug it in. We're gonna go to manufacturer settings. And where it says RC4 picks keyframe length, let's change that to five. And what this will do is it will replicate your data every five pixels. So in order to control this orb, instead of 150 addresses, it's gonna be 15. So if I go back to my DMX controller and I bring up address one, you can see that every five pixels is coming on. If I bring up address two, it's gonna be the green and our blue. Pixel one is the same as pixel six and so forth down the line. This is how we can control 50 pixels with just 15 addresses. With the DMX picks, you can pick how you're gonna change your replication. I just picked a keyframe of five because it was easily divisible with 50, but you can pick any number that you want. You can also pick the way that your replication pattern happens. Check out the link above to learn more about how the replication process works. Now that you know how to make a magic orb sending wireless pixel data from your console with animations and all that stuff using the DMX picks, you can take this same setup and apply it to other things. Let's say you will need to make a magical sword a la Lord of the Rings, where you have energy moving through etchings on the sword and stuff like that. You can do the same process that we did with this with the DMX picks to get the same kind of effect. We hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comments. And if there's a tutorial on something that you would like made that has to do with wireless dimming or pixels, let us know. Drop a comment below. Thanks for joining RC4 Wireless. Make sure you drop a like, ring that bell, and subscribe to the channel to stay up to date with new tutorials coming out and how-to videos.